So Jim Ratcliffe buying Manchester United, it's the dream. It's the ultimate dream. Manchester United fan, born 10 miles away from Old Trafford, Britain's richest man and a fan of the club. It was an interview a couple of months ago, maybe even not, was it? In, in August, it was released in the Financial Times uh, from a spokesperson from Ineos confirming the fact that Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos would like to buy a minority stake in Manchester United with the intention of a full ownership and taking the club away from the Glazers. And tonight he's had an interview a lot in a live Q&A with the Financial Times down in London. And what I'm going to do is bring you a video of the interview here and we're going to run through what he had to say. He confirmed the fact that he wanted to, if Manchester United was for sale in the summer, that he wanted to buy it after Chelsea failed. He also confirmed that the Glazers, he's spoken to the Glazers and they have no intention of selling. Let me run through everything that Jim Ratcliffe's had to say in this video because it's really important, I think. So make sure you let me know what you think in the comments below and make sure you watch this whole video. But let's, this is when Jim was asked directly and pushed by the interviewer on buying Manchester United. Possible to you might acquire it at some point? Well, I think... The, uh... <laughs> now, I don't know about you, I, I, and I don't know whether I'm looking into that too much because I'm hopeful of it, but the pause before thinking about his response, for me, it's a little bit telling. I, Jim, I've watched this whole interview. Fucking hell, Ineos has got a lot of money. They're doing like multi-billion pound investments all over the world, multiple ones at the same time. Like we're talking about a four billion investment with Manchester United. It's just like scratching the surface with what that company is doing, with the portfolios they've got and the spread it is. For us looking at it, it's an insane amount of money. But Jim, if he bought United, it would just be another business transaction. But it's, let's listen to what he had to say before I start waffling. I apologise about that. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I've, I'm a lifelong Manchester United fan. Um, and I was there in 99, that most remarkable match in 99 when, uh, in uh, Barcelona. So, uh, you know, that's sort of deeply etched in, in my mind. But um, Manchester United is owned uh, by the Glazer family. Uh, whom I have met. I've met Joel and Avram, and they are the nicest people, I have to say. They're really, they're, they're proper gentlemen. They're really nice people. I didn't expect. I didn't expect that. I didn't. I don't know what I was expecting from the interview tonight, but I didn't hear, expect to hear him wax lyrical about the Glazer family. Uh, I don't like the sound of that, I'll be honest. And? They don't want to sell it. And it's owned by the six children of the father, and they don't want to sell it. Mm. So if it had been for sale um, in the summer, yes, we would probably have had a go following on from the Chelsea thing. Uh... Clear as day. It's the first time that we've heard him speak directly about it. And Jim Ratcliffe there has absolutely confirmed the fact that Ineos would have wanted to buy Manchester United if it was for sale in the summer. Honestly, like, having sat there and listened to the whole interview with, with, with Jim Ratcliffe there and listening to all, all of his business ventures and how he's got to where he is and X, Y, Z, you kind of learn a bit about the man himself and a bit about how he invests his money and where he, where he invests his money. I personally feel the fact that he started there by speaking about how he's a fan. You know, he was a fan. He spoke about 99. He spoke about previously, uh, before this part, which we haven't got a video of, he spoke about how he feels that money is a crucial part of success in modern football. Uh, and obviously, that's a bit of a nod to the fact that he feels that Manchester United have not done that. And therefore, subsequently, the success has not followed. Uh, but I don't know why he's... I suppose it's a public start... No, it's the same same thing as expecting, uh, even if Eric Ten Hag was glazes out, expecting your manager at that point to speak about it in public. It's not going to happen in the same way that I didn't expect Jim Ratcliffe to come out with a shotgun here and just like, pfft, just spraying it there, saying, oh, fuck the Glazers, get them out. I want my club back that I'm a fan of as a kid. Let's listen to what else he had to say. Uh, but we can't sit around hoping that one day Manchester United will... Uh, become available. So I think what will happen now is we will get... We have a sports franchise, which is a really interesting franchise. I mean, you know, we own a third of the Mercedes Formula One team, which is, you know, has been the most successful in the last few years. Robbed last year, obviously. But, uh, <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we've got a, a great cycling team. Elliot Kipchoge we're quite close to. And, um, 
and probably the most challenging of all is Ben Ainsley with his America's Cup challenge, which is, which is going quite well at the moment. Boring. Obviously a couple of years away. But the one thing that we don't have is a, you know, the most popular sport in the world is football. It's the sport you've got nice. John, Andy and myself were brought up with, and it's sort of closest to us. So we, we should have a, an asset in the sporting franchise. That a premiership club. Well, not a premiership. I think a, a premier club. Okay. No, a premier club. I think that part is very, very important. It's obvious that Jim Ratcliffe wants to buy a top-level football club. Chelsea was an opportunity that sort of slipped through the fingers. Manchester United is an opportunity. So Jim there is saying, look, Manchester United isn't for sale. Jim, man, you know you're wrong. You're abso you absolutely know you're wrong. And I'm, I'm going to do a video on this probably on Saturday now. The Glazers' strategy has failed. The European Super League are all hinged on that. Now that that's gone, the Glazers will want to sell Manchester United. The door of opportunity is far, far more open than it ever has been before. Does that mean that the protests aren't doing enough? I don't think that would be a fair thing to say. But it, I think it would be a fair thing to say that this has to be a call for everyone to try and do more. Do what you can. Join whatever the 1958 are doing. Be there for the Newcastle protest. Be there for anything online in terms of hitting the sponsors. Because Jim Ratcliffe in this interview has absolutely confirmed his intention to buy a top level, in his, in his words, a premier football club. And in, in his own words as well, he's made it clear that he would have bought Manchester United if it was for sale in the summer. I don't think there's ever going to be a for sale sign like I see on the thumbnail stamped outside Old Trafford. But it does not mean that it's not for sale in the same way that a club might be saying that their players aren't their player isn't for sale. If you come in with the right price, everything's for sale in life. Jim Ratcliffe is a very astute businessman. And for me, that part of the beginning there is probably the most astute part of it all. And, um, and would so, you like so to not, come back not... for another? Do you think there's a possibility you might acquire it at some point? Well, I think the, uh, <laughs> he started to speak um, before he paused himself. Now, again, I might be looking into it too much because I want it to happen. And there you're damn right I'm looking into it too much because I want it to happen. Because, Jesus, Jim Ratcliffe is the biggest opportunity that we've got. Interestingly, other parts of the interview, because I watched the whole thing, he was asked towards the end about the concept of American owners. Uh, you know, this is the thing that Gary Neville's been going on about. And he said that, that quote there, that he sees a football club as a community asset rather than a financial asset. And that would be a differentiation between his ownership of a, of a Premier League club and someone like Todd Bowley or the Glazers or Stan Kroenke. And it just makes you want him to buy Manchester United even more. Also, um, he also said that he's had great length, conversations at great length with the owner of Manchester City and the success, the, and the success that they have had there. Don't think that's too similar, given the fact that they is effectively a sports washing project and they've run the club into hundreds of millions of debt. But look at what City have done now. It's eventually come full circle, but it was a hell of a lot of investment to get it there. But Jim Ratcliffe has reconfirmed the fact that, actually, no, not reconfirmed. He's confirmed for the first time from his own mouth that Ineos would have bought Manchester United if it was for sale in the summer. Jim, man, we are for sale. The Glazers have run us into the ground. They've bled that oil well dry. And it's cracked. And the only thing that's going to get that oil well spewing again is more investment. And it's the investment I don't think that the Glazers are going to be willing to front. That's why they're trying to... Look, I think they're trying to have conversations to try and sell... Mate, imagine they try and sell the, the stadium right, the naming rights, and take all the money from that just to fund everything. I, I think that was, I suppose, as interesting as I think it could have been, that interview with Jim Ratcliffe. I didn't expect anything more than that. In fact, I actually expected a little bit less. He's confirmed the fact that he wants to buy it. He's confirmed the fact that the Glazers do not want to sell. And that's from conversations he's had with Joel and Avram directly. Maybe that's it. But I don't think it is. 1958, keep doing what you're doing. Everybody else, keep doing what you are doing. I will keep producing videos like this that keep hopefully putting some sort, even if it's only like an iota of pressure. It's some sort of pressure. Everyone's got to do what they've got to do because you've got a man right there who was a Manchester United fan. As I said, the first thing that he spoke about when he was asked there about by Manchester United <laughs> was the fact that he was um, a fan. I mean, I've, I'm a lifelong Manchester United fan. Um, 
And I was there in 99, that most remarkable match in 99. When, uh... He was there in 99. Jim, man, bring those glory days back. Bring United back. Buy the club. Don't want to hear that United isn't for sale because everything is for sale. You've got the money compared to the other investments you're doing. It's a pretty, it's a pretty normal investment. Keep putting the pressure on. I think this only helps us. It might not be the, the big step that we wanted. The, the idea that he's calling the Glazers gentlemen. Jeez, I mean, come on, man. Literally, the, 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 your presentation is called Leading Through Disruption. And let's not go and like, let's not go and rub the belly of the Glazers. And come on, man. I don't know what to say. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. But uh, that's my reaction and that's the actual interview itself and my comments on it. You can let me know what you think. Make sure you subscribe if you're new.